Hello, it has literally been raining all day here in the UK and it's still kind of raining right now from being on this a little bit just past over then. But I'm still outside stargazing because I'm testing out a very new telescope and that is the Skywatcher HAC125DX. Now this is the latest and improved variation of the original Skywatcher 125 HAC telescope that I did a review on a couple of months ago and I absolutely adore the telescope, I think it's amazing. And with this new model they've improved it, so much so that I can now accompany the telescope with an IMX533 sensor which is turning it into something very impressive. The goal tonight is just to simply get a few live videos taken with the telescope so I can get a first impression of it because the forecast for the next week is absolutely terrible. So fingers crossed we can get some decent targets in and compare the telescope to how the previous one looked with a QHY 585C camera. I'm really excited to try this telescope out. It has a lot of potential and at only £599 I think it could be a real bargain. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Right, so I figured we'd start things off with a direct side-by-side -side comparison between the two telescopes in my dirty old shed. So visually, the scopes are near identical when viewed side on, the only difference being that the newer model has a DX at the end of its name. But when viewed closely, you can note that the newer DX model is slightly longer than its predecessor, with the most noteworthy improvement being that the focus of this telescope is now at the back. Previously, this was a bloody nightmare. I actually like helical focuses in which you can rotate a dial or knob to achieve focus, but with this telescope, you're obstructing the starlight with your hand when trying to pinpoint your stars. It's a very messy dilemma, so this feature alone is a big enough upgrade to make this all worthwhile. Now, with the original design, I proclaimed that the only cameras that would work with the telescope were lipstick-style cameras, so as to not obstruct the telescope's field of view. But with that being said, I did try and use the Player One Saturn camera with the telescope, which uses the very popular IMX533 sensor. I did really struggle with it, but I just about managed to achieve somewhere near optimal focus. Yeah, okay, the IMX533 sensor is slightly higher resolution and bigger pixel size, making it an even better choice for live imaging than the QHY 585 Mark III color camera. But the beauty of the QHY 585 camera was that it utilized a USB-C input which meant I could use a super skinny cable like this and obstruct as little of the light as physically possible. Whereas when I attach the Player One Saturn camera to the telescope, it needs your typical Astro Data cable, and the input port is on the side of the camera, which meant for the old design, I could not attach the dew shield, nor could I do anything about the thickness of the cable. Which brings me to the second major improvement of the Skywatcher HAC125 telescope, a hole in the dew shield that allows you to thread the cable through. This is very well designed and clearly shows that the manufacturers have considered real world uses when selling this telescope. And to back that claim up even further, the original dew shield had like a screw thread at the end of it so you could put it onto the telescope which was a bit of a nuisance. Now though it uses free screws to tighten its position and secure it at the end of the telescope. So all in all I'm very happy with this. The telescope has now received a worldwide release as opposed to just limited locations and it's still priced very competitively at just £599 here in the UK. But the real selling point for me is that the telescope is designed to work with an imaging circle of up to 16 millimeters. It even comes with multiple adapters for you to attach your own camera too, which means it took like 30 seconds for me to set the Player One Saturn camera up. It's summertime here in England, which generally means 20 degrees Celsius and lots of rain. So this video is solely going to be my first impressions and not an in-depth review. Now when shooting with this setup, I want you to know that I'm capturing 0.3 second long exposures at gain 600. I'm then playing these images back in sequence at four times playback speed. The videos therefore are going to be really noisy, but they are very good live views of what the night sky looks like and that for me is the reason I want this telescope and I think it could be the perfect telescope. So right now this isn't looking at anything special, I'm just doing a first video test whilst the telescope is in its home position and pointing at Polaris, the North Star. But already this footage tells us three really interesting details. Number one, the star shape is stunning. I hadn't even considered it, but I suspect the shape of the camera is causing these tremendously aesthetically pleasing diffraction spikes. So none of this one awkward spike sticking out nonsense. This looks beautiful. 
It actually reminds me of the stars from the images taken by the James Webb Telescope. Number two, the clouds are being a real bugger and the risk of rain is a constant threat. And number three, the stars across the field are an incredibly healthy shape. On the older design, it was an absolute nightmare adjusting the collimation, trying to produce a flat field across the board. But this is how the scope's views are, straight out of the box. In fact, almost bizarrely, I didn't even need to focus the camera. Don't get me wrong, I still tried to perfect it, but literally straight away, the stars were pinpoint, which is just insanely convenient. Probably a one-off, but yeah, still pretty cool. I'll be able to provide a more detailed analysis as to the shape of the stars in the future when I take some long exposure images. But as you can see from these live views of the Ring Nebula and the Dumbbell Nebula, the stars seem nice and round across the board. At a focal length of 250 millimeters, the telescope obviously produces a very wide field of view, which I prefer when doing live imaging like this anyway. It makes it easier to figure out what you're doing and where you're going. This video of the binary star system, Albario, just about shows us the contrasting red and blue stars. I suppose you can't quite resolve the stars independently, but you can still make out a difference in colours. The following shots are going to be really noisy, but that's because I'm pushing the scope up against a couple of nebulae. No filters are going to be used here, but you can just about make out the structure of the North America Nebula. But let's be honest, it's not too great, but it's more than can be said for the Western and Eastern Bell Nebulas, which I really struggle to bring any detail out of. However, when I pointed the telescope very low down in the horizon towards the Swan Nebula, it gave me a very nice sneak peek. I even managed to briefly get a view of the pillars of creation. I think the noisiness of this image seems way worse because of the movement of the clouds, but you see this swift movement in between deep sky objects. This is what I really adore. The ability to point the scope at whatever I want and have a nice bright view of my targets is something I've been dreaming of for a very long time. Yes, I know that a lot of the elder statesmen of this hobby are going to bash the telescope for various reasons. But it's £599 and it's given me live views of the Andromeda Galaxy like this. Once again, let me reiterate that the scene conditions are not great. I am viewing this from a Bortal 6 location, so the views that you can get with this telescope are undoubtedly going to be much better than this first impression. I said in my last review of the previous 125 telescope model that my absolute dream setup would be to have this telescope set up on a random sequence, where every couple of minutes it pings towards another deep sky object, preferably it would be in a randomised order. I know none of us are fans in the exponential increase in satellites polluting our night sky, but I've I've got to be honest, I absolutely love watching satellites whiz by these cosmic wonders. Astrophotography is beautiful but not very immersive. Staring at your laptop screen trying to switch to the right filter and the right settings for a 5 minute long exposure is so abstract to physically observing the night sky. But in turn, visual observing can be so underwhelming without the right setup. And in comparison to the spectacular masterpieces you achieve with astrophotography, it can be relatively boring and by the end of the night you have nothing to show for it. So I think this is the perfect middle ground. Astronomy and stargazing are to me two of the coolest hobbies imaginable, which is why I want to be able to share what it is I'm seeing every single night with my family, with my friends, and with all of you lovely people online. And this affordable telescope allows me to do so. The next cheapest alternative to this, by the way, is not yet released, but it's the 6-inch Celestron Rasa telescope for $1,699. So this 5-inch Skywatcher 125HAC telescope for $599 pounds seems like an absolute steal. I'm not being paid to promote or say this, in fact with the previous model telescope I only discovered it when scrolling through AliExpress and buying lots of weird stuff that I came to refer to as forbidden gear, which is stuff that wasn't sold here in the UK or US for a number of different reasons, and I'm pretty sure the Skywatcher HAC 125 wasn't sold here in the UK or US simply because they didn't think it would do very well. I will be trying to release a video in exactly one month's time that is a more comprehensive review of this telescope and what it can capture, so make sure you're subscribed for that. So yeah, there we go. What do you think of the videos I managed to capture with this telescope? Let me know in the comments down below and would you recommend a telescope given that it's only £599? If you are interested in a telescope then I've attached a link in the description below where you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. I think it's starting to rain. Oh god.